Well, hey there, everyone. Just want to give you a little update on the 48 inch mill project. Uh, today, I brought in one of the connecting rods for the engine. Uh, as we're going to have to uh, make a new uh, bearing insert uh, for this, so I wanted to bring it in, clean it up, so I can get some good measurements to figure out exactly what it is that we have to make. But I wanted to just show you a few things about this, uh, these parts here that I found quite interesting. Um, so the, uh, has the two bolts, a fine thread, and each one has a, has a nut, and these are specially made nuts. But what I, what I found interesting on this was that this here has all these marks on there, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way to 18 and back to one. And, uh, that's quite interesting. I've, I'm betting this has something to do with the pretensioning of the bolts. Um, I don't. I can't think of anything any other reason. But for each notch that you go turning the the nut, you're pretensioning this bolt a little bit more. So that would make sense if that's what that was for. Now the other one doesn't have that on there. The other one just has a uh, it has a part number j14743-1 so um 14743 it might be a drawing number and that's part one off of that that drawing i don't know what the j stands for um but uh yeah it's 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 an interesting you know little game of uh industrial archaeology here trying to figure out this stuff so you have these uh these screws these bolts here so those would screw in and the nut would be here and that would push up against you can see that little that little rounded uh collar that was machined into the bottom so it's basically set screws and you have one on each side and over there as well because the last thing you want for to happen is for this nut to work its way back off <laughs> um and then also over here, this end has a uh, little protrusion here, which goes into a slot there, and that keeps this this bolt from from turning at all. Um, so this side here is the top side. So when this thing's in the engine, it's setting up like this. And there are marks. There's a number one and two X's. And then there's a number one there. So the one and the one uh, be a match mark. So I've got these set here in the right order. So you have a, a uh, hose here. Now that would, that would take oil from one end of the rod to the other. And generally, I'm not sure exactly how they had it on this one, but I know on the Todd, that the uh, that the mechanism for getting oil to the cross head and then to the big end that that was attached to the cross head itself and then there was a pipe that ran back to the big end i'm pretty sure that's the same way on this since um, the motion of the cross head was just back and forth and you weren't trying to follow you know the big end of the of the rod around the interesting thing is I, I've been taking that, taking that hose off, but originally there was a pipe that was just welded to the side of the rod. But then I noticed right here, so look at this gouge. So that would have been that pipe, that oil pipe, for every revolution making contact with the, with the rod, um, either just just moving back and forth just a tiny bit or vibrating on it was enough to wear that groove into that rod. That's, that's kind of amazing. Um, I'm sure probably at some point it wore, of course, into the pipe. And then when the pipe uh, got a hole in it, it was like, well, oh my God, it's uh, worn into that a lot. We don't want to do that again. Let's just use a hose. A hose isn't going to do that. So they put the hose in there. So, um, yeah, I'm basically just going to get it get in here and uh, clean this thing up with the wire wheel, 
um, it's pretty nice should be a pretty nice surface finish underneath all the grease still and uh, do our, do my measurements to figure out what I have to do for the uh, for this liner here we're thinking of um, making a pattern and then casting it out of iron right here on site and then machining it. Hopefully we can machine it on site. We're looking at getting a lathe that should be big enough to do this and put the dovetails in it and then uh, casting the babbit lining and then doing the finished machining on the babbit. So I'm hoping, number one, that we have the time and number two, that we have the facilities to make this part, these parts, completely in-house without going to anybody else or any assistance. Let's see if we can do that. That would be pretty cool to make a major part here on site. So, all right, everyone, I'm gonna get back to work. Talk to y'all later.